All right, good afternoon, everyone. We'd like to start uh, Treasurer's Advisory Council hosting a um, Asian American Pacific Advisory um, Heritage Month celebration. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jin Lee, and I'm pleased to welcome you to state, uh, Illinois State Treasurer Mike Frederick's eighth annual Asian Pacific American Heritage Month celebration. Uh, thank you all for being here. And please stand as you are able to for the Pledge of Alliance. Please arise. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated, everyone. And we'd like to recognize a um, few uh, of our special uh, guests this afternoon. Um, we have a Deputy Council General, Naksa Feng, from Royal Thai Council General. Please have a nice. All right. Thank you. And, and then I'm sure a few others as well. So we will be recognizing as people are coming in. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we'd like to uh, introduce our dear friend, uh, partners uh, to the Asian American community, our state treasurer, Frederick. Uh, Michael Frederick, our treasurer, was elected Illinois State Treasurer in November uh, 2014 and re elected twice, starting his third term in January 2023. The treasurer's office uh, invests in money on behalf of the state and also local units of government. Treasurer Frederick also believes in providing individuals with the tools so that they can invest in themselves. He does this by encouraging savings plans for college and trade school, uh, uh, interesting, uh, increasing financial education among all ages, removing barriers to a secure retirement, and protecting residents from uh, predatory companies as well. Treasurer Frederick is married to Erica. He has a daughter, Alia, and uh, he recently announced there will be a addition to their family, new members. So let's give her a round. All right, Treasurer. Uh, uh, please join me in welcoming our dear friend, Illinois State Treasurer, Mike Frederick. Thank you very much. So uh, as Jin pointed out, there will be a growing family in the Frerichs household. Excellent. Uh, I announced the family would be growing. I did not announce how much it would be growing by. Uh, we will be adding two oh. new boys to the family uh, mm. within the next couple of months. So it's an exciting time. <laughs> it's an exciting time in our house, but it's also an exciting time here in Springfield, here in this building. I very much enjoy these, uh, these events. For a couple of years, we had to do these remotely. And it was nice because we would do interviews with the winners and we published on social media and more people could see it, but it's really special to be able to do this in person and see people in person here today. And it's, a, it's great to see friends, friends like Jin who serves on my uh, advisory committee. Thank you for that kind introduction. I wanna thank each of you for joining us uh, as we commemorate Asian Pacific History Month. It truly is a pleasure to be with everyone here today and especially our honorees and their family and their friends. So our honorees have made an investment in their communities, and today we're recognizing those contributions. Throughout our history, the Asian and Pacific Islander communities have represented the bigger story of who we are as Americans and embodied the truth that diversity really is our nation's strength. Here at the State Treasurer's Office, we celebrate diversity year-round and the strength it brings to Illinois. We know a wealth of research shows that diversity benefits corporate decision-making and company performance. In short, diversity is good for business. I'm a firm believer in the importance of raising the bar and setting higher standards to encourage diversity. And then the Treasurer's Office, we are doing our part. In 2014, before I took office, there were $603 million in assets brokered by firms owned by minorities, women's, veterans, and people with disabilities. $603 million. Today, that number is $51 billion. Thank you. 
$603 million to $51 billion. That's an 84-fold increase, and it speaks directly to our commitment. We've also increased business that we do with women, minority, veteran, disabled-owned asset managers. When I took office, Treasurer had just $18 million under MWVD asset managers. Today, we have $3.7 billion. That's a 206-fold increase. And we've also prioritized MWVD operated venture capital firms and our Illinois Growth and Innovation Fund. Of the $648 million committed to attract and retain uh, tech-enabled Illinois businesses, $279 million has been committed to MWVD firms. In addition, investments from innovation fund managers have supported 349 diverse-owned portfolio companies to receive funding. One of the goals of our innovation fund is to target investment opportunities with managers that can provide a financial return and make an economic impact. We recently closed a $5 million commitment with Kinsey Capital, an Asian and women-owned firm. It's headquartered in Chicago and will focus on opportunities in the consumer and manufacturing industries. We are proud of the work that we do here in this office. We are here today to celebrate Asian Pacific History Month. Like so many of these special months, Asian Pacific History Month started off as a special week. In 1979, President Carter issued the first presidential proclamation for Asian Pacific American Heritage Week. By 1992, Congress had enshrined Asian Pacific Heritage Month into law. The month of May marks the date in 1843 in which the first Japanese immigrants are recorded as arriving in the United States. May also marks the date in 1869 when the first transcontinental railroad was completed with significant contributions from Chinese pioneers. This month's Asian Pacific History Month theme is advancing leaders through opportunity. I think in the Treasurer's Office, that's what we try to do, to give opportunity to people. We know that successful organizations help employees build their skills and enhance their leadership abilities. There is great diversity in the Asian and Pacific cultures, and today we recognize that. We honor nine individuals for their contributions to our state. An economic development leader, a community center founder, an immigration attorney, a college business professor, a state lawmaker, a labor leader, a tennis coach, a hospitality entrepreneur, and a groundwater engineer. Your vision, your determination, and passion for your communities have made our state a better place to work, live, and to raise a family. Thank you for your great contributions to Illinois. Today, we salute you. And let's start off and learn something about these awardees. The Treasurer's Office Outstanding Service in Business Award is presented to Megan Nakano. Megan Nakano is a founding member and a current executive director of the Asian American Chamber of Commerce in Chicago. She has over 20 years of experience developing strategic partnerships between the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. Megan's long business career has included roles as director of the Asian American Alliance Small Business Development Center, providing pro bono consulting services to minority entrepreneurs. As a commercial lender and CRA officer for an Asian-owned bank, she partnered with other financial institutions and community organizations to deliver financial education and support to the underbanked and ensure fair lending practices. As director of marketing at the Chicago Minority Supplier Development Council, and a consultant to its Minority Business Development Agency Business Center, she counseled Fortune 500 corporate members to help grow and promote their supplier diversity programs. Megan is a board member of the Chinese, of the Chicago chapter of the Japanese American Citizens League, where she served as president for 10 years. She sits on the board of directors for Heiwa Terrace, which provides affordable housing and services, especially designed for seniors and disabled persons. She's a board member and past president of the Asian American Coalition of Chicago. For all of that and for much more she has done, Megan, please step forward. Thank you to Treasurer Frerichs and your lovely team for this honor. Um, and thanks to Cook County Commissioner Josina Morita for nominating me and to the entire Asian American Caucus for their instrumental support of the Asian American Chamber of Commerce of Illinois. 
Asian American businesses were hit hardest by the effects of COVID due to anti-Asian rhetoric and their high concentration in the service industry and helping professions. The Asian American Chamber of Commerce was formed at the height of the pandemic to increase access to resources and opportunities for Asian entrepreneurs and raise awareness about their unique challenges and needs. Asian American and other minority owned businesses create jobs, wealth, jobs and wealth in communities of color and their success directly correlates to the health of the domestic economy. So we really appreciate your work in supplier diversity. It's critical that government, businesses, and each of us as individual consumers be intentional about our purchasing decisions, support Asian-owned businesses, and buy AAPI in May and every month of the year. Thank you. All right, the Treasurer's Office Outstanding Service and Leadership Award is presented to Sher Mohammed Rajput. Sher Rajput has been an Asian <coughs> Indian community leader in the Chicago area for over 40 years. After journeying from his native India and completing his MBA at Indiana University, Sher Rajput launched his company named Money Matters, which continues to flourish today. Mr. Rajput is a co-founder and trustee of the Indo-American Center in Chicago, which provides critical services to South Asian immigrants, as well as people from more than 30 nations around the world. As a longtime active member of the center, he has dedicated his life to serving the Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, and Christian communities, and has been honored for his interfaith initiatives. Mr. Rajput is co-founder and trustee of East West University. He has also been recognized for lifetime service by the American Federation of Muslims of Indian Origin and the Indo-American Center. Often called the mayor of De Devon, he's... <laughs> I think I, that means we got it right here, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. He serves as Senior Vice President of the Indian American Association of Chicago and has been an organizer of the Indian and Pakistani Independence Day parades for that and for so much more over his career that we don't have time to all read. <laughs> please join me in welcoming Sher Rajput. Mr. Rajput, please step forward. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, Treasurer. Uh, my God, I thought I was dead. <laughs> All the things I have done, he went through so much. I'm grateful for invitation. There's, there's much more. We, we, we couldn't do it all. <laughs> really, I'm, I'm, I'm wordless, but I want to thank you, the Treasurer, and my fellow honorees. You have such a tremendous job. When we came, when I came here, I had 50 cent in my pocket. And I come from, uh, I have only two minutes. <laughs> I come from a desert state of India where I was raised in a, uh, uh, not uh, hut, hut. hut. Uh, thank you, Lorani. <laughs> Uh, let me, if, with your permission, I want to recognize a couple of my friends. Sure. It's okay. My person who nominated me, and I've known him for the last 102 years, he's, <laughs> he's only 39. <laughs> Professor Ashish Sen, please, can you stand up? Thank you. Uh, Sadhru Nurani is everywhere serving Hindus, Muslims, Christians, you name it, uh, Chinese, uh, Japanese. Sadhru Nurani is my longtime friend. Please stand up for your job. For, for. Uh, two more people. <laughs> uh, a very a, a, a Supreme Court lawyer from India who is a super lawyer. If you need a lawyer, please come to him. I have his phone number. I am his manager. Three Bhavan Gaur from Super, we call him Super Lawyer, Supreme Court of India. And he practices in America as well. He's licensed to practice. Uh, th then I have a, a big man who owns a company called Blackstone. Uh, Ashraf Hashim, please stand up.
one more. <laughs> uh, the, the man who is always taking pictures and is assistant vice president of the recruiting company, uh, foreign Indians, he brought foreign students to America. His name is Zakiuddin Muhammad. And I'm already standing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm grateful to the treasurer because he's not only doing for Illinois, but he's also doing for our countries. He honoring me as Indian, he honoring you as a, as a Asian, Chinese, uh, uh, what's the other, uh, Singapore, every country. So, so we are honored. I want to thank him and I pray for him uh, to have a long life and uh, good health. And uh, is your daughter's name is Alia? Ella. 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 Yeah, my daughter's name is Alia. Of course. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so he has two more, and I pray that he get two more. <laughs> Not that I could tell the mayor no, but he demonstrates, you know, uh, how difficult this job is. There are so many people who have come to this country. They've worked hard. They've worked hard to make a life for their families, but also to grow communities and help those who come behind them. And so, yes, you did point out several people who are friends. These are all people who uh, are worthy. Uh, and given enough re-elections, I'll eventually get around to all of these people. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so uh, next up, the Treasurer's Outstanding Commitment to Community Service is presented to Sadia Siddiq. There you go, right behind me. There you go. <laughs> Sadia Siddiq has been practicing in the legal field as an immigration attorney for over 20 years and is a founding member of the Siddiq Law Group with locations in Chicago, Indiana, and Los Angeles. She is a member of the American Immigration Lawyers Association and a frequent organizer of immigration panels, sharing her expertise in representing clients who are seeking asylum, are victims of trafficking, or have been victims of crime in the United States. She's a past clerk of the Chicago Immigration Court. And throughout her legal career, Sadia has striven to strive to serve immigrant and minority communities. She has given numerous free lectures on immigration law and immigrant rights presentations for such community groups as Soy Familia, Chinese American Bar Association, Indo-American Center, and the Pilsen Neighborhood Council. Sadia regularly takes cases pro bono and has referred <coughs> domestic violence cases from nonprofit groups, including, including Apnagar, Prairie State Legal Services, and Hamdard Center. Outside of her pro, low bono and pro bono legal work, she's an active member of her local school council and served as her school's delegate to the Near South Community Leadership Steering Committee. Sadia served on Cook County Sheriff Tom Dart's Muslim Tax Task Force, advocating for representation of Muslims in law enforcement in their communities. She is a graduate of the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana. Yes, you'll notice there is a lot of orange and blue in the treasurer's wardrobe. And the DePaul University College of Law, Ms. Sadiq, please step forward. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Treasurer Frerichs, everyone in your um, office and staff, and of course to my um, fellow nominees. Congratulations, everyone. We're so impressive up here. I do want to thank Sadruddin Nurani from your advisory council who did nominate me. Um, I met Mr. Nurani back in um, right after 9-11, and um, I was a young attorney at that time, and I was representing folks who had to go for special registration. And unfortunately, this was a program that was targeted towards Muslims, and they had to come in and register with the US government. So it created a lot of fear in the community. I remember meeting Mr. Nurani at that time, and we sort of helped guide them as best as we could through this process. So thank you so much. But with that spirit, you know, I think it's very important that especially people in our community, the Asian American community, as diverse as we are, we sort of step up and help our fellow folks that are in need. 
We have a lot of asylum and migrant seekers uh, here in Chicago and Illinois, especially throughout. Um, so I've always made it a mission to try and uh, make sure that our law firm can represent and help as many folks as possible. So thank you so much for recognizing this and more importantly, for allowing the next generation to know, hey, this is a role model, somebody that you can look at and know that you have a place um, in our system. So thank you so much. All right. The Treasurer's Outstanding Commitment in Education Award is presented to Lily Kim. <laughs> Lily Kim has dedicated 20 years to the educational field in numerous avenues, teaching a variety of grades and subject areas. For the past seven years, Lily has been an adjunct professor at DePaul University Dry House College of Business, where she teaches a course on effective business communication. Pride in her cultural background is a big part and passion of Lily's career and educational focus. She serves as the chairperson for Chicago Sister Cities International Busan, Republic of Korea Committee, and is involved in the Sister Cities Global Youth Ambassadors Leadership Program. Lily started her journalism career at Korean American Broadcasting Company in Chicago as an anchor and reporter covering local Asian American community news. She co-founded A Scene Chicago, an online news magazine that showcases the city's Asian scene. Six years ago, Lily founded and chaired the inaugural Taste of Korea Chicago Festival, which continues to be a popular showcase of South Korea's bright culture. I believe I was at that inaugural one, wasn't I? <laughs> For the past five years, Lily has been involved with the National Korean History and Culture Seminar for Educators. She has also been a longtime volunteer for Junior Achievement, an organization that educates, inspires, and prepares young people for success. Lily is a past recipient of the Asian American Hall of Fame USA Excellence in Public Relations Award. For that and for many other reasons that are too much for us to mention here today, uh, Ms. Kim, please step forward. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Annyeonghaseyo. Thank you so much, Treasurer, for honoring me with this award and for the council as well. And honestly, I was a bit amazed when considered since I've been teaching at DePaul for seven years. Um, exactly 20 years ago, I went back to Korea for my first time. I didn't care so much about my cultural background and I didn't even speak any Korean, well, barely. After six long weeks back in the motherland, I was finally proud of my black hair, my almond eyes, the unique food and really appreciated kimchi and all the hard work that my mom and dad did to bring us here over to the States. When I returned back to Chicago, I started my first broadcast job at the Korean station covering local Asian community news. I was just learning my own Korean um, identity, but learning about the Filipinos, the pa um, Pakistanis, Japanese, Koreans, Thais, Mongolians, Vietnamese, all of them. Indians. Indians, yes. <laughs> the biggest one here, Thank Devon. You. I was up there all the time. <laughs> but what I learned about covering all these Asian communities is that together we're stronger as one voice and at the same time to always hold on and be proud of our individual Asian ethnic identities. Those were the stories I love to talk about. Then I found a Taste of Korea Festival. Now that our generations are getting deeper into being more American, they don't have the opportunities to go back to the motherland like how I did. But they can go back to our neighborhood festivals. They can go back to their restaurants and see where they came from, taste their foods, and be proud of who they are. I didn't realize that I was teaching just for the past seven years at a higher institution, but for the past 20 years in my community where I'm proud to be a Chicagoan, proud to be Korean, proud to be Asian American. Thank you, Mr. Jin Lee, there he is, <laughs> for nominating me, being my personal teacher and my mentor. Thank you, Professor Dr. Whalen, he's here from DePaul, who recruited me, he saw something in me and had me become a professor as well. To my oma and appa who literally broke their backs. My dad hurt his back so he couldn't be here. My mom had to take him to the hospital. And thank you, Paul, for being here. I look forward to being life partners and to raising our baby on the way and to pass Yay. on. <laughs> Yay. And to teach him. We have a boy, too. There's another boy over there, too. And teach him everything that we know. Thank you, Treasurer, for recognizing us all here today and for being such a great teacher yourself, being such an awesome friend to the community, and happy Asian American Heritage Month, everyone.
<laughs> Good luck topping that news for any other recipients. Uh, as someone who has twins on the way, I'm so very excited and happy for you. Um, and you reminded me of something. You said you went back and uh, talked about your connections to the homeland or discovering. Uh, a big reason why I like doing this is my daughter is, uh, her ancestors were immigrants. Um, but they weren't immigrants to America. They were immigrants to Korea. So in the 1880s, uh, they were missionaries that spent three generations living in the Korean Peninsula and still have strong ties there. And I'm looking forward to that time when my daughter gets to go to Korea and sort of experience, if not her roots, her family ties to the peninsula. Uh, our next recipient uh, can't be here, but she has a good reason. She is uh, State Representative, State Representative Jennifer Gong Gershowitz. She has to work today. The General Assembly is finishing up their work this week and next, and so she couldn't be down here. But I do want to tell you a little bit about Jennifer's background uh, so we can celebrate her. Jennifer Gong Gershowitz is the granddaughter of Chinese immigrants who fought deportation under the Chinese Exclusion Acts. A sense of justice was instilled in her from an early age through her parents. Jennifer has been a determined fighter for the voiceless and vulnerable her entire adult life. After earning her law degree from Loyola University Chicago School of Law, she worked as an associate at Winston & Strong. She was the first American lawyer to earn a Master's of Law degree in International Human Rights Law from Northwestern University. Jennifer is committed to ensuring that the ladders to success are available to every child in Illinois. She's a founding member of the Illinois Unaccompanied Children's Task Force and a former board member and STEM advocate at the Glenview Education Foundation. She continues to support the North Suburban Legal Aid Clinic, where she built up the immigration law practice to serve dreamers, domestic violence survivors, and low-income residents. For the past, past four years, Jennifer Gong Gershwitz has served as a full-time legislator representing Illinois' 17th District. She chairs the House Judiciary, Civil Committee, and co-chairs the Immigration, Human Rights, and Higher Ed Campus Activities Committees. Other assignments include committees on higher education, family law and probate, and firearms and firearm safety. She has supported bills relating to secure choice, unclaimed property issues, and college savings tax credit increase, the ABLE asset protection, and higher education savings accounts, to name some of our favorite bills in the Treasurer's Office, because these all affect the Treasurer's Office. The representative is working today in Springfield with legislatures in session. We'll, I'll present the award to her at a later date, but I wanted you to hear the kind of work she has done, and if we could give a round of applause in abstentia. <laughs> the Treasurer's Award for Outstanding Achievement in Workforce and Labor is presented to Roy Chevadil. Boy, I gotta say some nice things about you first. <laughs> You'll get a chance to add to them. But Roy Chevadil was born in India and completed his master's study in botanical sciences at Kerala University. Did I say that right? You can correct me when you come up here. Kerala. Kerala. Kerala University. After immigrating to the U.S., he received his diploma in radiology at the Cook County School of Radiology and later completed a certificate program in cardiac interventional technology at the College of DuPage. Roy and his wife have both worked for Cook County Hospital for over 25 years. He is currently a lead technologist in the cath lab. He is the proud father of two successful children. Roy is the vice president of SEIU Local 73, where he serves as chief steward for technician and technologist contracts. He has represented his brothers and sisters in many grievances that have provided successful outcomes while serving as the Midwest Regional Chairperson of the SEIU Asian American Pacific Islander Caucus. Roy is passionate about building worker power and collaborating with partners to fight racial injustice in the workplace. And Roy is excited and eager to get up here and share, <laughs> share some remarks as well. Please step forward, Roy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tricia. And um, like he said, I am one of the vice president of SCAU Local 73. I didn't born as a leader. I born as a child. And so many people influenced me to become a leader in the workforce. My grandparents, parents, especially my younger teachers that I studied in a Jesuit school, 
the formation class is one of the biggest class I ever remember. Stand up and fight for the people who don't have the voice. And I got a chance when I came to United States to do that. And then it became my passion to fight for justice and fight for the fight for the people who don't have the voice. I become the voice for them. And my union helped me a lot to become what I am now. Thank you, Diane. Um, she's my uh, president and she's standing right behind you guys. <laughs> and I want to recognize her. I want to recognize my community uh, priests and nun came and I, because of them, I learned so many things in the communities, what we are suffering and what we have to fight. Especially my wife and son is here. And I took away a lot of time from them to work for this. And thank you, everybody. All right. The Treasurer's Award for Outstanding Achievement in Sportsmanship is presented to Santana Tongsitavong. Born in Laos during the Vietnam War, Santana immigrated to the United States at the age of nine. His family was sponsored by Abraham Lincoln's church in Springfield, where he grew up with six siblings. Santana play, began playing tennis in a high school that did not have a tennis program. At the suggestion of the coach, he went out and recruited players to form a team. He be, began playing USTA League Tennis and spent a year coaching a college team, all while pursuing his bachelor's degree in marketing from Illinois State University. Before tennis became Santana's full-time career, he spent 13 years helping children of all ages and abilities through, the, through service, something he is deeply passionate about because of his childhood as a refugee. He spent 12 years as the head tennis coach at Rochester High School before taking over four years ago as head tennis coach at Glenwood High School in Chatham. Two years ago, he founded a community tennis association while simultaneously developing a relationship with the USTA Midwest section to grow educational and play opportunities for young tennis players. He is currently the recreational tennis manager at Springfield Park District. We're going to get to know each other because <laughs> I've got two young boys on the way and they're going to have long wingspans. And we're going to have them playing tennis. <laughs> where he is excited to bring back US, USTA programs. He has a family of his own now, with his 15-year-old daughter competing in tennis tournaments. As his own children get older, he continues teaching them about tennis and their Lao heritage. Coach, please step forward. I guess we're gonna go <clears throat> the theme about children. My, uh, I have twins on my own. <laughs> and, uh, and today is their birthday. So they got to know. They are 11. So, you know, so, um, fourth one couldn't come because she thinks taking tests at school is a little more important than coming up. So she had to do that. So um, thank you, Treasurer, uh, for this award. Um, as I look out into the crowd, um, you know, seeing all the recipients, um, they're just, there's so many stories. There's so many stories of where we are now. Um, when, how I grew up is actually what got me into coaching. You know, being a refugee, um, not, not learning English until you're 13, um, learning English through TV, uh, sliding the card through the thing and you look and you know, you repeat what, what the picture is. So. Um, it's hard enough coming over as a refugee. It's harder when you come to the United States and as most Asian American growing up, bullies was really big issue that growing up. But as our Asian culture, we don't make that such a big deal of it. We go home, do our work. So that led me into coaching because what can I do to change that. So I got into coaching. If I can reach the youth instead of, you know, do a, you know, awesome job here, but 
what we need in life is what we got from what I didn't have when we were in refugee. We have food, we have roof over our head, and we have family. So after that, now what do we have? So my job as a coach is to reach as many youth as I can to develop them into good human beings so then they can have, be a good people in society. So that's the reason why, you know, when, when I got this letter email, how do I fit in that? So, um, so that's where it got me, and there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, so, uh, you know, with, with my message, because I don't tell them my story, I don't tell them my story, all right? So we go to low incomes area, we go to, because if I can do it, anyone can do it, right? If I can do it, anyone, anyone can do it. If there's a hard time, I pull them aside and say, hey, you can do it. This is my story. So thank you again um, for this award. And uh, again, thank you for everybody here. So. You know, I guess I challenge people to try and top Lily's announcement that she was having a kid. Uh, announcing you have twins and it's their birthday and you brought them up here. It comes close. Happy birthday. The Treasures Award for Outstanding Achievement in Arts and Humanities is proudly presented to Billy Deck. Billy Deck is a two-time Emmy Award-winning TV personality, actor, attorney, restaurateur, and the CEO founder of Rocket Ranch, a hospitality entertainment company that owns and operates several celebrated restaurants in Chicago, including Sunda New Asian, The Underground, and The Cocktail Club. He also founded a cutting-edge marketing agency called Coact, leveraging top independent talent around the world to align strengths, lower costs, and increase returns. He can regularly be seen on NBC's Today Show, acting in films and on TV shows like Criminal Minds and Empire, hosting his own podcast, The Meal of Your Life. He recently filmed a new documentary called Food Roots, and his mother's native 7,641 7, islands of the Philippines. Mr. Deck served on President Obama's White House Advisory Commission on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, as well as the White House Bullying Prevention Task Force. As uh, Santana just pointed out, that's still very much an issue and something to address. He was born and raised in Chicago and is a Chicago Kent College of Law and Harvard Business School alum. An avid community activist, he has served on many local communities, boards and commissions, including the American Cancer Society, Looking Glass Theater, and Make-A-Wish Foundation. For that and many other reasons, I am proud to present to you Billy Deck. Deck, come forward. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's just a supportive group here today. I love it. I like your uh, Oh, thank you, sir. I knew you were coming. I wanted to, you know, represent, make sure you thank weren't you. alone. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you, State Treasurer. Uh, you are um, definitely one of a kind. I, when I was appointed by the president uh, in 2014, I had this great pleasure of attending quite a few cultural events across the country with a lot of city officials, state officials, government officials. And some people don't have events like this. Some people do. And there are those that do that even take it a step further and I think are really passionately and organically 100% uh, exuding the culture. And you, for the AAPI community, it's very obvious to us that you have a very special connection and we appreciate it. And I just want to give you a round of applause for that. Um, I also, I mean, so many wonderful people out here. I know it was also, not to put you too much on the spot here, but you also, know, I know it's very important to you to have young folks be able to see uh, different folks of color, background, ethnic origin up on stage. And, um, and, and just seeing your, your son here, I kind of, <laughs> your kids are so beautiful. Um, and I kind of see myself in, in that little guy, not to, count, to call you out over there, <laughs> but I was your age on these streets, you know, in these environments. And folks like us never had the mic. Uh, our parents, our grandparents, we didn't, we weren't on the stage. You know, we weren't part of this. So that was amazing. I was like super touching to see your dad up here. And it really only means that, you know, kids like you, when they see stuff like this, your efforts like this, they know they can be anything in the world. We may not have had that in the past when we were young, but we're definitely bringing that message forward. Um, and so, you know, I just think that's amazing. Happy birthday. Um, you all, uh, you mentioned the White House Bullying Prevention Task Force. I did serve 
um, for four and a half years under President Obama for his President's Advisory Commission on Asian Amer Americans and Pacific Islanders and the White House Bullying Prevention Task Force. As we talk to kids from kindergarten through senior year in college across the city, state, and the country, um, it really came down to this abuse of an imbalance of power that was what we found to be created by a lack of content, a lack of storytelling, a lack of exposure to different ethnicities within our community, um, and really all communities. Uh, Asian Americans, Pacific Islanders were bullied 20% more than other racial groups. I found that to be um, really shocking. Uh, although, growing up in a Filipino household um, where Tagalog was spoke, 24-7 and Filipino food was cooked 24-7. The mainstream folks and kids that came over definitely made me feel insecure and uncomfortable about my ethnic uniqueness. Um, so I, I always saw where that came from. And a lot of that really led to the passion, I think the intersection between arts and humanity uh, that really is important is, is the actual act of storytelling. All of us really taking a moment to tell the story. And I mean everyone in the room. Um, Recently, I had two of my last three elders pass away on the same day in the Philippines, and I felt really guilty uh, because I never really went deep into the culture to learn the recipes of my ancestors. And as a restaurateur, that was really frustrating and embarrassing. Um, but I did feel all that pressure to like push away. So I immediately dropped everything and went back to the Philippines to learn the recipes of my ancestors and feel and understand and take in the culinary and cultural heritage um, DNA, all the sorts of stories of my family and their struggles and all the good, bad and ugly that you won't learn otherwise unless you go back into your own heritage to learn those sorts of recipes. Um, and again, I mean that from all cultures around the world. So uh, I look forward to sharing it um, later this year on PBS and through some film fest. Um, but generally, my only you know advice ask um, is just that everyone, no matter who you are in this room, you go back to your roots and you tell the recipes or you tell the stories of your, of, 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 of you know, your, your lineage. And it will create more color and story in the world, in the classrooms, on the playgrounds, in the sports games. And that l uh, lack of content will no longer exist. And therefore, that abuse of an imbalance po power will no longer exist. Um, with that, thank you so much. And last but not least, I have to give a shout out to my sister, Aurora Ostriaka, who um, nominated me and has been an amazing person. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, oh. I want to say thank you to Billy for uh, pointing out the a passion for this. If I have a, a passion for this, and I believe I do, it's because uh, after college, I moved to Taiwan. And the Taiwanese people were so nice to me, uh, so generous to me. They taught me, they taught me, giving free Chinese lessons every day. Taught me phrases like "ni hong gao, ni shi ju ren, ni da lan ma," which <laughs> some of you understand. Which mean <laughs> you're very tall, you are a giant, do you play basketball. <laughs> After starting with a conversation about my height, it led to lots of conversations, which led to invitations into the home, uh, and it was just uh, very much appreciated. But I also understand how difficult it can be as someone who's not from that culture, because I worked really hard on my Chinese. I worked really hard on my accent, but I never reached the point where people mistook me for being Chinese. <laughs> True. But I know how sometimes it can be difficult to uh, assimilate into a different culture and why it's very important uh, that we're welcoming here in America. So next up is the State Treasurer's Special Humanitarian Award, and it's presented to Tenet Natisri. 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 Great. Natisri. Uh, Tanet Natisri has been working in construction related fields since he was just 12 and is still dedicated to groundwater engineering. Ten years ago, he founded and is currently the international team leader for American Groundwater Solutions, an Illinois based nonprofit company that continues to provide charity service to Southeast Asian countries that need consultation concerning waterworks. Tanet is also an entrepreneur. He and his wife, Yada, who joins us today, own the renowned Thai D classic Thai cuisine restaurant in Marion, Illinois, in far southern Illinois. But most importantly, Tanet is our own Illinois hero. In 2018, 12 young soccer players and their coach became trapped by monsoon rains deep in the Tamlulong Cave in Thailand. 
with about 450 rescue workers under his command. Tanette worked nearly 20 hours a day to ensure the boy's safety. Yet he remains humble by maintaining he was just the water guy. He is now featured in Amazon Prime's 13 Lives, a survival drama directed by Ron Howard, which portrays the rescue at the Tamluong Cave. Tanette also served as an executive producer for the National Geographic documentary on the incident, simply entitled The Rescue, for which he won two Emmy Awards. We have a couple Emmy Award recipients here. In 2019, Tanette was in the front line of responders to the floods of Alexander County in downstate Illinois. As state treasurer, I want to recognize this brave and humanitarian efforts and to thank him and his team for continuing to provide free consulting, support, and resources to help solve water-related environmental problems in many parts of South Asia. Tanet is not able to join us here today because he is back in Thailand, helping on those groundwater issues. But joining us today and accepting on his behalf is his wife, Yada. Yada? Thank you so much, Tesher. Okay, I am, uh, good afternoon. I'm honored to accept this award on behalf of my husband, Tanit Natisri, who cannot be here today due to his humanitarian work in Thailand. It is with deep gratitude that I accept this award from my husband, and he is very proud to receive this award. Thank you so much for uh, do, do, um, dominating my husband. Uh, Tanit is a dedicated humanitarian who has devoted his life to helping others. His current projects in Thailand focus on groundwater projects to assist farmers and agricultural schools. Uh, we moved here um, about 20 years ago. So um, he, we still have a really deep root in Thailand and he's still really attached to, um, to Thailand as our own country. Um, so he has he been growing up, we, he's seen a lot of farmers and a lot of people suffering from water. And that's why um, once he grown up, he still, you know, wants to dedicate his knowledge about groundwater to helping people in Thailand. Tanet's philosophy is simple, water is life. It is the origin of everything. And without it, we cannot grow any agriculture products or even sustain our own lives. This is why he, you know, has committed himself to this cause. And he firmly believes that everyone should have access to clean water, regardless of their social economic status or any location. Everyone should have water to survive. Tanev would like to thank all of you for your support. He'd like to encourage you all to continue to support the work of those who are striving to make a difference in the world. And I want to express my deepest gratitude for this recognition. It is a testament to the hard work and dedication of Tane to helping others. And it serves as a reminder of the importance of humanitarian work in our world today. Thank you so much. All right. This, uh, this doesn't happen today without the help of a lot of people. So I want to give a special thanks to members of the State Treasurer's Advisory Council. So will you please stand to be recognized. I think we have Jin Lee, who you met already. Aurora Astriaco, who you've got a little bit of taste up here. Sardin Nurani, who was called out several times. Harrison O, oh, And Dr. Anish Sen. Thank you all very much. I was pointing out the passion of this office to recognize these people. Uh, this doesn't happen without the help of a lot of other people of passion. Passionate about their heritage, passionate about the country that they or their families moved to. And so thank you for your service to our state. And once again, I thank each of you and every one of you for your attendance and participation today. We know you have lots of places you could be, but I think this is one of the best places to be. <laughs> I'd like to thank our staff and all those who served on the selection committee. My staff, of people who served on the selection committee can wave their hand as well. Oh, I think they're, they're hiding in the back. May we please give, give another round of applause for all of today's awardees. Each of them represents the best of us, and it's important that we have this opportunity. We share roses for those who serve our communities while they're alive and well. Now, well, the other reason I like this, doing it in person, 
is now we get to eat. <laughs> so before we do, we're going to take some pictures with all the awardees up front here. And then I think we are setting up, the, Bob is telling me, in the other room. Uh, I hope you'll join us for some of that wonderful food that some of our awardees talked about. A nice sample of uh, cuisine from around Asia. Thank you all very much.